Hi, this is Cherie with Rehash Fiber. Recently, I was in Eureka, Montana. I had originally planned to go there for the Fiber Festival. Once it canceled, I decided to go anyway. I needed an adventure and I was gonna seek out fiber in any form or fashion. And also, I took along my own projects, so I knew with extra time anywhere, I could work on my own projects. So I did go over the vendor list for the show to see who was around and who was close to Eureka that I could possibly visit. And I contacted Justin Michaels of Michaels Mountain Sheep. And sure enough, he allowed me to come over one morning for a meeting. I had no idea what was in store. I just knew I wanted to be on sheep farm and learn something. So when I arrived at the farm, the first thing I noticed was big, beautiful dogs. They were the guards for the farm and for the sheep. Uh, but I just, they were beautiful. Now, I was so focused on sheep that I did not talk about dogs or focus on the dogs in the video while I was there. But I do wanna let you know that Justin and Tammy Michaels also do breed these dogs and they are very good caretakers for the farm. These big dogs were, and I'd never heard of them before, so this is why I've got to read this. Caucasian of Charka, and Charplaninets Shepherds. You will need to contact Justin and Tammy to learn more about those. You can check out their website and their Facebook page. The dogs were from Russia, that area of the world, so they're worth checking out. When I met Justin, we got right into it. He started just showing me the sheep and telling me everything. There was so much good, valuable information. It was mind blowing. And most of the time I had the video running for it. I was also trying to remember things as we go. So the video does cover a lot of it. Uh, however, there were some things that I just wanted to make clear that, you know, as a fiber artist, I think of sheep as, oh, the wool. <laughs> just the beautiful, fabulous wool, and how cute the sheep are, and how fun it is really when you're with them to put your hands in their fleece and just touch it. Of course, there is more. There is not only the fleece, the wool, but the meat, the horns, and the milk. Now, the milk is something that has never crossed my mind before. And Justin does go into its health and healing properties in the video that I got. As far as the horns, they're useful for different ways, regulating the sheep's body temperature. And then once they're off the sheep, they can be carved into beautiful things like a handle for a knife. So I do need to tell you that if you are interested in Justin's information, please bear with the video. There were some audio issues and wind. And so I have done everything I can to clean that up so it's more watchable. Uh, this was my first time taking video out of the studio. So it was a great learning experience, but that is truly what it was. So I do hope you can enjoy the information that Justin has and just looking at their fabulous sheep and the story of crossing the Icelandic with the East Frisian and why and the attributes that they want to come from them. So enjoy. Come here, Lickers. Okay.
<laughs> so it's three quarter Icelandic, a quarter Canadian. So uh, then going through that process uh, to develop that single coat. This would be a three-quarter bred lamb, so all fine. This is a, uh, it's a single coat. This girl, now this girl has got the outer tug, but it's much finer. It's not as coarse, still more traditional to the Icelandic. And then, hold on sugar, and then the fine uh, wool down in the bottom is kind of what the Icelandic are famous for with Icelandic sweaters is that thel, really fine fiber down in the bottom. This girl uh, is another one of our crosses and so she has much much less of the tog and a much more fine fiber and from the Frisian that's in her um, not only single coated but just getting a better a better fiber uh, you can see kind of the, the crimp and twist that's in her fiber and that doesn't exist at all uh, really in the Icelandic oh it's amazing oh quit she lived in the house for quite a while. So she is all fine fiber. And it, it's growing out looking long. It looks like the, the, this is tog, but it's not. This is all fine fiber. Um, and so she's got a beautiful, for as early in the year as it is, she has a beautiful fleece coming on but that's all spinnable fine fiber, um, which is our mountain sheep cross. Same with that one, the black one, little ram, um, and the gray ewe, this little ram lamb. You can see the difference in that fiber. That, you know, it is a finer fiber, uh, but it's in a nice big coat rather than the hair and then the fine fiber underneath. Like the Icelandic, you know, you have that outer tog that's hair, but it's not fine fiber. This little girl here, she's got a nice fleece on her too. So that's kind of where our goals are. Hey, Coco. What are you doing? Now she has a really beautiful coat. How many sheep do you have total? Uh, right now, actually, we're probably down closer to 40 um, and almost half of them are on a different pasture. Okay. Uh, so this is one of our uh, Michael's Mountain Sheep Crosses. You can see all fine fiber and uh, really beautiful natural color. Then we get a little bit as she comes closer to winter, she'll get just a really nice crimp and uh, huge fleece, though. You know, she's in August right now. But she'll go, this fleece will be double this by the time she's shorn. This, uh, little white ewe is actually 50-50. Uh, so she's halfway through that process. She'll be used in the breeding process, but even though she's half Icelandic, that's where this longer kind of a tendril looking growth comes from, but it's all fine fiber. And then she does have, she's gonna have some beautiful just pure white fiber. Just gorgeous. She is white as can be.
this little girl, this is Mabel. She is a real cutie. She's another of our cross. So all fine fiber. So the, you know, we've crossed the Frisian and Icelandic for a lot of different reasons. The Icelandic are so hardy. I mean, they, it's, they can live through anything. They're just, <laughs> they're kind of bulletproof. And the Frisian are also very hardy. Uh, but the Frisians are really, really, really friendly. Um, they're just very easy to handle. And so when we cross, then we get a um, calmer, easier handling sheep. The Icelandic can be a little more wily. Um, and then both of them, both of the lines that we're breeding have very low to no lanolin. Now this girl is like 15 years old. And then she's full Icelandic and then the tog. But her fine coat is like chocolate and look at that kind of a luster and crimp to it down in there. It just, it's been really beautiful um, seeing some of the product that has come off of her and her children just because it, it's that deep coffee color down in there. But really beautiful. So when you're breeding them, do you have any control or try to have control over color? Yeah, yeah, you do have some. And so, you know, it's kind of, we can pretty much tell between the U and RAM what combinations are possible, just knowing their back line and where they've come from and what they're carrying genetically. Um, but the big thing is to break through the Frisian color barrier. So in our crosses, you know, we want that full uh, Icelandic color to come through. And in the Frisians, they're either black, white, or black and white. They don't carry any color. And so our 50-50s, most of the time, are going to be black and white in that second generation. And then when we breed back to them, that's when we get the Icelandic color back in the third generation. What do you think, Jenny? Huh? So, yeah, we're trying to get that Icelandic color back in that, that third generation of Michael's Mountain Sheep. And it's been pretty successful. The other thing we want is the horns. And so, I know there's lots of pulled flocks, but actually these guys just handling wise, we love having the horns. It's nice to have a handlebar. And then uh, we actually use the horn quite a bit. Uh, I make custom knives and I use the horn in the knife handles. Uh, and so it's another product for us. Uh, people actually ask for uh, horn sets and different things after butchering season. Uh, and then they actually will defend themselves with the horns and um, because of that uh, we've seen our ewes work together to fend off dogs and stuff um, and they will use their horns same with the rams so it gives them their own protection mechanism you know we want wide horns that are healthy um, that actually clear of their face and, and you know <laughs> these are the dudes so really What we have found is if you really want excellent animals, you have to have the best rams you can possibly get your hands on. And so we're in our 
breeding program, you know, we're really watching for standout rams. Um, this guy, both of these guys are great. Um, Chance here is actually fantastic. Icelandic, purebred Icelandic. Uh, then we have purebred East Frisian. Uh, and you can see that uh, really thick, dense East Frisian wool, uh, that single coat. It's, uh, it has a little bit of crimp to it and nice fiber, nice, nice single coat. But, and then the, the fell and tog of, you watch yourself, of the Icelandic, you know, his, his Icelandic fleece is absolutely fantastic. You know, he has that, that longer tog, but down underneath, he has incredibly good fine fiber. The ram next to him is a three-quarter bred. That's our mountain sheep cross. So much less fine fiber. Uh, this ram over here, is, you can see how much more fine fiber he's carrying than the longer fiber. This is full uh, Icelandic, again with the tog, a lot heavier tog. Yeah, buddy. And, uh, but, but Chance, his fiber, his tog is immaculate. I mean, it's, it has such a, a luster to it and just a really beautiful fiber. So his babies that are bred to, uh, uh, one of the 50-50 cross ewes are then coming out three-quarter bred and have a really gorgeous fine fiber. Are you two guys locked together? Okay, good. Now there's a ram in here I really want to get a hold of. He's our number one Michael's mountain sheep. Come here, Steel. Come here, Steel. is exactly what we're breeding for. Um, just really excellent horn growth. But then his fiber is some of the most sought after of any that we've created uh, in the mix because he has no tog. He's three-quarter Icelandic, but in the breeding process, it came through absolutely perfectly for this gorgeous, kind of a gunmetal gray. He's very much gunmetal gray on the bottom, but he has this luster and twist, kind of a crimp. I can get it to pleat over. There you go. So you can kind of see that uh, that gray, just a beautiful gray, just nice crimp, but just gorgeous fleece. And you know he's got a great attitude. Beautiful, beautiful horn set perfect structure for what we're breeding for. Um, but one of the interesting things, I'll try to get him over. Come on. Come on, buddy. 
you can actually get your hand on them. But it, there's just enough oil to kind of condition that wool to where he carries it cleanly. But it's not gummy, it's not sticky, and there's no smell. I mean, he's a top breeding ram. He's one of the top in this whole pecking order, but no stink. I mean, up on his head even, where they're usually kind of nappy and stinky. It's just dry, clean fleece. And he actually, he has the, the shoulder that we want, uh, the taller, longer frame for a butcher body. And his uh, daughters are heavy milk producers. So he's, he's the total package. Chewy here, he's also a mountain sheep. Same dry fleece, no, no nappiness to carry it really well. Uh, he's got kind of a variation of color, excellent horn set, great body. So he's another one of our, our top mountain sheep rams. One of our top mountain sheep rams went up the hill. He decided not to uh, land at purebred Frisian. Then we have 50-50 rams. We really need those good 50-50 rams. And then the full mountain sheep rams. So by needing all those different variations, uh, we end up needing about 14 rams for the process. So it does leave us a little heavy on rams. But the red ram back there, he has thrown some of the most beautiful uh, red daughters and sons. And actually some of his sons, his mountain sheep sons, he's a mountain sheep ram also. But some of his sons have been some of the most beautiful rams we've ever produced. This guy is one of our older Icelandics from the Sago line and uh, big fleece, uh, big horn, uh, but uh, uh, he's, he's been battered by some of these other guys and busted the horn this last year. So. Way. There's, you can see him looking through. That one is a fantastic Icelandic. He's one of the best. His name is Swenson. Let's see if Swenson will come around. Take you, take you, take you. Take you, take you, take you. Come on, get you. Hey kids, Sh shade it over here guys. Come on. Hey kids. Hey kids, hey kids, hey kids, hey kids. Hey kids. Hey kids. Gray one shorty. Beautiful fleece. It might save him. We would like to reproduce that fleece for sure.
Take it, take it, take it, take it, take it, take it, take it. The two on, I wanted to show you are on the very top of the hill now. Um, you have really beautiful ramp. Uh, they created their own little back scratcher exit point there. Scratch and claim their wool, so. But yeah, there's uh, there's two really excellent rams up there. That one that just picked his head up on the left, top left, is one of them. That's Swenson. He's full Icelandic, but incredibly gorgeous blonde fleece. I mean, it's like it, it just has a, its own flax quality. This beautiful golden quality when we shear his. But you can see how much bigger their fleeces are than the girls. You know, they're basically out on this pasture that we've virtually eliminated knapweed from. It used to be an unusable pasture. This was just vacant land that had not been really pastured that much because it was all knapweed. Like all this knapweed here, it's a noxious plant, so it actually kills the plants next to it. So it kills the grass, it kills everything. And so this whole hillside was covered with noxious weed. And these sheep absolutely love to eat that weed. But they, so they have cleared this pasture and actually the land is healing over now uh, after five years of, of having these sheep on there. And, but when they eat that, especially in the spring when it's first trying to come up, it just propels them. Horn growth and their fiber growth, their fiber growth is incredible. That's, so that's a lot of why their fleeces are twice as big already as the, the girls is because they're getting some nutrition even from the weeds that the girls aren't getting on regular pasture and hay. So Chance is a uh, black mouflon and that's a color pattern in the Icelandic. So he has actually a tan belly and he has the brown highlights on his legs and the brown and tan highlights on the bottom of his head uh, and ears. So it's kind of a specific color pattern. It was uh, an answer to prayer. We, uh, my wife had a uh, very devastating heart condition, uh, supraventricular atrial tachycardia, and uh, was on a very dangerous heart medication and uh, we were really praying for a solution, a healing and uh, the Lord led us to the sheep and a couple months later when she had her first drink of sheep's milk uh, her all of her heart flutters and pain and tachycardia went away and so uh, Within a couple months, she weaned herself. If she quit taking her heart medication, it would kill her. So she had to very, very slowly cut her tablets down and then just started drinking the milk every day. And she's been off her heart medication for seven years now. So her heart is completely healed. So we didn't know we needed the sheep, but I guess the Lord knew we needed the sheep. And uh, that's where we discovered studies after the fact that their milk is so rich in zinc, magnesium, potassium, and calcium, which supports nerve function. And so the, the heart specialists two years beforehand had told us that that could be causing her tachycardia. It was only a theory and they couldn't test the nerve, uh, the, the mineral content in the nerves uh, and there was really no way to take a vitamin to cure it because it could actually cause more problems. Uh, but 
the milk, the way that it assimilates into the human body and allows all those minerals to just flow in, it absolutely restored her, the nerves to her heart. So um, that's how, you know, we didn't really know what we were getting into at the time. It was just a sense that, hey, we need to do this. And ultimately, you know, bringing about her healing and then um, we started our breeding program just because we fell in love with the sheep and we fell in love with both breeds because both breeds have really excellent attributes for milk, fiber, and meat. And we thought, man, if we could take all the good from both those breeds and bring it together, what would that be like? And so that's what we've tried to do in the Michaels Mountain Sheep. And it's been a huge success. We've sent out, I think, 14 starter flocks this year to help other people start and, uh, you know, people want all the triple-fold benefit. They want the, the milk, the meat, and the fiber. They want to, and it's so much easier than larger livestock. You can have just a few acres and have a handful of animals and still get dairy products fresh, get the fiber and the meat, and it's highly sustainable because they can live on almost nothing. I mean... They don't need a really good pasture. They they love weeds more than they love grass. So it's really worked out for people to share them with people and then hear back on the good that they're doing uh, with other families. But How many sheep did you start with when you first started? <clears throat> we had, uh, let's see, we had three East Frisians. We had Lander, who was our East Frisian sire, and he was our foundation Frisian. He was a total gift. Then two East Frisian ewes, and then we had uh, Sadie that you met, and uh, she was our oldest Icelandic ewe, and then we had four uh, lambs, Icelandic lambs, that came with her. Uh, so we had about eight that we started with, three and five. And uh, then just kind of went from there. Here comes Swenson. He's the total package. Come on, Swenson. Come on. His fiber is extremely fine. And so... Um, yeah, just an incredible, incredible Icelandic ram. And then paired with uh, East Frisian U, it has fine fiber. It's just perfect. You know, pretty tickled with him. Beautiful wide horns, clear from the face. Great body condition and, and frame. Their horns allows them to cool off. It's another way that they can uh, cool in the heat. And actually their fleece is an insulation from the heat. I mean, they, they do really well, even though it's 100, 100 degrees and uh, extremely hot. They do really, really well. It's a very coarse Icelandic hair. Uh, it's a it's a tog, and uh, he is because of that. He's not a breeder uh, in our program. Do that. He's gonna show up. People like the fact that it's all natural color. So you get the variegation between the silvers and grays and then have them on the cart or feed in some white and makes for a nice piece of felt. And then we're using that to build all sorts of stuff. And then our just our straight 
whitewashed fleece um, and people love that too because you know they can take that white felt which has not been bleached so it's not diminished <laughs> you know this is uh, the white and gray felt so if you actually feel this it's it has a softness to it that's the first thing that people um, will comment on is the the nature of the wool is not scratchy it, it just has kind of a, a smoothness to it it's made a lot of the felt products really popular and so we are making all sorts of different things this is a set of mittens and uh, then we needle felt in the elk horns on the top we've done all sorts of stuff moose horns and you, know, you name it but then i build these with a full leather uh, palm which has been pretty popular too but people can wear these over the top of like a really light glove and uh, just be really really warm so it's 20 below zero that's a good thing to have making knives so like on this knife the black in black here is uh, the sheep horn and then the brown is actually um, mammoth woolly mammoth tusk uh, from the Yukon but that combination of the tusk and the black ram's horn works pretty good and then this one is uh, a piece of maple and then the the more blonde ram's horn on each end uh, and with our sheep the color so this has brown kind of running through in streaks their fleece their skin pigment runs through their horn in streaks so it's just beautiful color All right, everybody, thank you so much for coming on that journey. Happy fiber travels, and thanks for watching.